video, live video of just my opinion. Sitting here, comfortable in her, clothes hanging up behind me, socks behind my head, watching this entry about a um, viral pandemic. And wait, no, 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 this is a movie with Brad Pitt. Never mind. And there was a line in this movie. Mr. Pitt is having a conversation with somebody else's character, and they start talking about the 10th man. I know I've heard this term growing up somehow. I don't know. Probably hurt. Well, I know I heard it the first time I watched this movie, and it just didn't dawn on me what it meant. But watching this tonight, Something did pop, you know, something sparked the synapses of the phrase, the 10th man, and made me think of conspiracy theorists or people who are accused of being conspiracy theorists. I do have a live video on that very subject, a YouTube video. And before you go back and look for that video, it wasn't the last one, but the one before. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, like, and share for all of your friends. The 10th man, and I doubled up and at least looked it up on the, the ethernet to make sure that the definition in the movie matched what's actually going on as the real definition of the 10th man. And as it goes, 10 people are presented with a problem. And when the first nine people are unanimous in the result, the process, the thesis of a matter, and all agree on the type of solution that should be taken, the 10th man has a moral obligation to question it. Tenth man has an obligation to not only question it, but go completely contrary what the other nine men agree upon in order to maybe find an alternate, not really opposing or a, an opposing view or a point of view that cancels out the first nine men, but it's a way to present alternative solutions. Watching the movie, thinking about it, looking at the definition, and wondering to myself, this is just a what if kind of situation, it's just my opinion, of maybe, maybe, just my opinion, maybe all the people that are called conspiracy theorists are actually the 10th man, men and women. Man, you have to remember, is what we call our species, we are man. We are not lupins, we are not canines, we are not porcin, we are man. And maybe we all have an obligation to be the 10th man. And those other nine need to realize that having somebody with an opposing with an opposing view or an opposing solution or a solution that gets the job done but is contrary to what the first nine come up with does not cancel them out does not make them disappear does not make them untrue it is possible to have more than one solution or there's possible to have more than one approach to reaching the same conclusion. So I'm watching. I'm watching this movie, and, and I joke. And I joke. It wasn't a documentary. It's my droll sense of humor. I get a lot of my sense of humor from watching film of Phyllis Diller. And if you don't know who Phyllis Diller is, subscribe to my channel. Then look her up. And if you're on watching right now, smash that like button. 
get it past the algorithm, get it out to more people. So the 10th man, what is the difference between the 10th man and someone who's involved in conspiracies? I would say really nothing. If I see, I see somebody trying to bake or mix a pie crust and we don't, but we can still use butter. I would be the 10th man in the sense that I'm trying to help the other nine that are using lard. There's plenty of lard. There's not a shortage of lard, but saying, hey, we can still make a pie crust using butter to replace the lard. You still get a pie crust. And being the 10th man in most situations is a good thing because it keeps people from being dodos, from bleating, from just kind of going along with it. Well, the, the first five dentists say that this brand is great. So uh, the rest, the other four or five are going to go along with it. Stop. Listen to the approach. Mull it over. And then it's what they used to, you know, what some people still call playing the devil's advocate. It's like, okay, let's play the devil's advocate and try a different approach to reach the same conclusion, to get across the same finish line. Being the 10th man is an intellectual obligation to make sure that, number, number one, you are not a blind man holding on to only one side of the elephant and being consumed with the fact that you are afraid to let go of that side of the elephant to check out the other perspectives. Cause that's what happens with a lot of people when you're unable. Most people are, most people are stuck with the idea if they let go of their blind knowledge that it will no longer exist for them. If I let go of the elephant's tail to reach for the trunk, then the tail is going to be gone, which is not true. It will still be there, but you, the 10th man would know that even though you're not holding the tail of the elephant, but you are now holding the trunk, you come to the same conclusion just from a different perspective. In your life, I hope you are able to be the 10th man. When you hear the majority of your group agreeing, like, yeah, that, let's do this. Do not internalize it. I encourage you to not just internalize mm -hmm. your different perspective or your different approach or pivoting, but getting the same outcome as you know, the solution, the equal sign is the same number as everybody else. You've just used different math to get there. Be the 10th man. Be somebody who can read a situation, even if it's different and contrary to everybody else. Because if you can get to the same place they are, driving a Volkswagen, who really cares if they're driving a Porsche? You all meet up the same. And if you would like to comment on this live video or any of my others, I recommend writing me at just.my.opinion.podcast2020 at gmail.com. Before I end the video, make sure to subscribe, like, and share. That way you can always be on top when I get a hair across my hat and decide to just kind of sit and have a fireside chat with you. I and mean, what else are you going to do if your state or city or town or municipality is still in a strict stay-at-home order? Really? And this late at night? Well, this time zone, it's late at night. If where you are and you've got nothing to do and you've come to that last page of your favorite author's book, Subscribe. <laughs> kind of like a box of chocolates that way. When the lazy Susan comes around to the front, 
I just kind of pluck something off, go live and start talking about it. You have a wonderful evening. And thank you for everyone who's joined me tonight. Before I go, make sure to smash that like button. You know you do.